Okay, so now let us move to to something which is a little bit different. So until now, we have uh, essentially uh, looked at the encoding of logical systems. And here we will focus on some uh, programming uh, languages features and see how we can encode them in deductive. So this So this lecture will be uh, divided into two parts. So the first part uh, will uh, focus on object-oriented features and their encoding in deducti. And the second part, uh, given by Amelie, will focus on um, the translation of uh, semantic definitions as they can be uh, given in the K framework, that is, um, the syntax part of a language and its operational semantics. So let us go to part one. And uh, I will, um, in fact, focus on. Um, oh, again. Sorry. Uh, I will focus on a very minimalist uh, object calculus that is uh, the one defined by Abadi and Cardelli in 1996, so called the simply typed sigma calculus. So uh, briefly, uh, I remind you this uh, calculus. So we have types, and types are just records of types, OK? And the terms. You know, the, you, you can see they are very basic. So mainly we, we have objects, and an object is a record, a non-empty record of methods. And we can also select method and update method. So it is not at all class-based, but it is object-based. And the operational semantics is quite uh, straightforward. So the first rule explains that when you select a method in an object T, but you just reduce to, to the body uh, of these methods by replacing the self um, variable uh, by uh, the object. So you can uh, see uh, here that we have a special binder, which is a self binder uh, here um, denoted by this sigma. And the update of an object will create a kind of copy of the object <coughs> where the method um, LJ will be replaced by the new method. Typing rules, so again, they are very straightforward. So we have the, these four here uh, rules which are very simple. We can just look at this one, for example, so how to, to type uh, an update. So uh, if we have an object of type A, if um, the new method uh, has the right type, so we have to, to stick to um, the type, then we, uh, we obtain a new object of the same type. And this uh, calculus uh, features structural subtyping. And subtyping is defined mainly by this rule, um, which says that A is a subtype of B if and only if A and B um, are just the same on the labels of B. That is, A is a subtype of B if B is a subset of A. And of course, we, we had. Uh, two rules, one for re reflexivity of this subtyping relation, another one for the transitivity of this relation, and also the classical uh, subsumption rule. So we want a shallow embedding in deductive. So shallow here means preservation of 
variable binding, of typing, and also of operational semantics. So I will follow um, this in, in two pieces. First, I will study the calculus without subtyping, and then I will add subtyping. So first of all, let us translate uh, sigma types. So as we have seen uh, previously, and I should have said at the beginning of my talk that you will not learn uh, new things about deductive, okay? We are at the end of the school, so uh, <laughs> we have seen mainly all the, the important uh, features, and so it can appear uh, as an exercise, in fact, this, this talk. I uh, close my parenthesis. So uh, I introduce uh, two, two symbols, label for the types of labels, type for sigma types, and um, also um, a symbol option in order to interpret, uh, in order to interpret a type as uh, deductive types. Uh, we have no records in deductive, so we will encode types and objects as lists of pairs of labels and types for types in deductive. In list, however, order of labels matters. So how can we do that? So our solution will be very simple. We will implement um, our list uh, very easily as a standard list, so with uh, an operator for, for a constructor for empty list and another one for non-empty list, uh, which is recursive. And uh, we will rely on the translator to always print the labels in the same order, for example, the alphabetic order. Okay, you can say, okay, it's an easy solution. Yes, I agree. We, we have different solutions. So another solution could have been to, to use dependent types with uh, logical arguments and four things that the list are sorted and duplicated, duplicate free by construction. It's doable but complex, okay? So what it would mean? Uh, it would have mean to introduce, uh, okay, uh, again, uh, a constructor for the nil the empty type and another one for the non-empty type, but you can see that here you will have an argument which will be a proof that the new label which is introduced is uh, less than the other one in the rest of the type. So it means we, we are required um, a total uh, order on the labels. Okay, we can do it, it's quite complex. Another solution would be to, to make a uh, list com convertible, uh, whatever the, the order of the labels. And so it would mean to, to rely, for example, on the append operation, uh, which would be uh, associative and commutative. I'm, I haven't tried the, this encoding. Um, in fact, this um, encoding has been done before we had in deductive uh, the possibility to have AC um, symbols. But it could be uh, tried, for example, in um, deductive again. In the rest, I will uh, heavily uh, need uh, the notion of position of a pair, a label type, in a type. And here you, we will, so you can see um, the encoding in uh, a deductive of the membership uh, relation uh, with a constructor indicating that the pair is the first element of the list and another one to say it is deeper in the uh, list. So now first, let us, let us look at a terminating translation of sigma terms. So the objective is clear. We have to define a context and a translation function uh, mapping, so sigma terms to deductive terms, pre preserving typing. And we would like that the underlying 
uh, rewrite uh, system uh, is normalizing and um, congruent. Okay. So first, I introduce uh, this uh, MET uh, symbol, where MET AB is a type of message of objects of type A returning values of type B. So as we said before, an object is a record of methods, and so in deductee, we will rely again on list of pairs of labels and methods. Um, however, a sublist of an object is not an object. So, uh, and okay, the, the, the way we will create object uh, is to, to create them step by step by adding a method one after um, another one. So we need a complementary notion, a notion of pre-objects. And what is a pre-object? It is nothing else <laughs> than a list of methods. And we will give them a type. So pre-obj and pre-obj AB is the type of pre-objects of an object of type A implemented on a part of A and the type of this part of A is B, okay? So uh, it is nothing else than uh, lists, so, but we have specific uh, constructor for this pre-object, p nil and p cons, and once we have this pre-object, it's very easy to define an object of type A. It is a pre-object of type A defined on A. So you have this rewrite writing rules saying that an object of type A, so this type rewrites to pre obj AA. So, okay, but uh, we still have to implement method. Uh, the simplest way is to, to rewrite met AB to the arrow type obj A to obj B. Okay, it is the simplest way, but it's not possible. Uh, otherwise, we would uh, lead into non-termination because here we have um, a negative occurrence of pre -obj. So we have to forget that for the moment. And we, uh, in fact, introduce two symbols, evalmet and makemet, and they will, um, we will axiomatize, in fact, the equivalence between met AB and this arrow type using these two symbols. What about now uh, selection and update? So um, we first will uh, implement selection and update on pre-objects. So um, okay, uh, we will easily we will uh, rely on induction uh, on position. So we you can see here. So we we will take as an argument uh, the position, and if um, we, uh, the label is at the beginning of the type, then we will have the base case, and otherwise we will have another uh, more complex uh, um, rewrite rules. So uh, the, behind the dots, you have the recursive case. And once we have selection and update on pre-object, then we have selection and update on objects. So we introduce two new symbols, obj select and obj update. Of course, they will be defined by uh, a rewrite rule, and they will be uh, defined to reuse uh, this pre-select and pre-update. The only uh, thing in interesting here is uh, about obj select. So uh, pre-select was just selecting the method. Now obj select is really the, the operational sem semantics of the selection. So uh, we will apply the, uh, the found method on the object of type A to obtain an object of type B. So we have to use here this um, operator I have uh, introduced here in order to, to obtain the, the right type. Okay, once we have uh, declared and uh, written all these rewrite rules, we put them together in this context. 
and uh, which is uh, denoted by sigma sigma. And uh, we can prove that uh, the underlying rewrite system is strongly normalizing and congruent. And we just have now to, to write the translation function, so nothing uh, very uh, difficult. Uh, we just uh, follow uh, and reuse the different um, symbols we have uh, introduced so far. Okay, and at the end, so we can prove that this um, encoding uh, preserves typing, so as uh, Tiago said, it is sound. Yes, but this encoding does not preserve reduction. Uh, annoying, because <laughs> we, we, it means that we will not be able, for example, to do proof by reflection if we want to prove properties about programs in sigma calculus. So how to recover uh, preservation of reduction? We just have to identify met A, B, and RO object A to object B, okay? So we just add these through rewriting rules, okay? And we will recover that times. We will have reduction preservation, but at the cost of termination, but in, uh, in this calculus, we can write programs that does not terminate. So, okay, it's nice for me. And what about subtyping? I will go very quickly because um, Gabriel uh, deflowered the topic this morning, so okay. And um, so I introduce um, an op um, a relation subtype explaining uh, what it means to be uh, a subtype of, an, of an, an another. So it's very easy. We just encode that uh, A is a subtype of B if B is a subset of A using our position uh, relation. So in deductive, explicit coercion uh, um, will be uh, used because uh, we don't have subtyping. So we introduce a symbol, coerce, explaining uh, we can translate, we can move from an object of type A to an object of type B if um, A is a subtype of B. So uh, we will have to, to provide a proof that A, that A is a subtype of B. And we will have to adapt uh, our functions for selection and update in order to handle coerce. Uh, because, in fact, coerce appears as a smart con constructor, okay? It's a new constructor. You have either, I would say, a standard object, and you have also these objects which uh, have an explicit coercion. So um, it means that we will have now uh, a new uh, operation select. It will be the same for update, okay? So it has exactly the same type than uh, before, but uh, we also have to take into account uh, this selection when it is applied to an object A, uh, which result from a coercion, okay? So here you have the redirection to, to the option select case, but here we have to, to deal with this coercion. And we also have to adapt our um, uh, um, translating um, function. Uh, I forgot to say previously that we uh, translate um, sigma terms, but not only sigma terms, we uh, translate typing derivation of sigma terms, okay? And here we just have to, to, to add this case, okay? And it corresponds to the to the fact, oh sorry, uh, to the to the fact that the derivation ends with the subsumption rule between types A and B. So in that case, we add a coercion, and that's it. Now we have our embedding, which is complete. So uh, I have used the um, the notation given by by Tiago this morning. 
and uh, we can we can show that it preserves again typing and reduction and we we conjecture that this embedding is strongly conservative we have no formal proof for that but we uh, st uh, strongly believe it is true and uh, to go to the Um, we we had a supplementary hypothesis. I don't remember technically what it is, but we can discuss about that. And uh, to to go to something which is uh, more tractable, uh, and in in order to to have more readable uh, deductive terms, uh, so we can do some improvements. So, for example, we can remove positions and subtyping proofs. Uh, at some places relying on uh, the fact that the subtyping and the position relation are decidable. We can show that. We can also have um, an easier way to, to create objects. In fact, uh, we can forget um, this notion of pre-order starting from uh, an object where all the methods are looping methods. So what is a looping method? It's just uh, a method saying that uh, for every label we, we call the, um, itself. And then we will uh, create the object just by update. And it uh, allows to, to have some more tractable things. And also, of course, we, we have to, to implement type inference for sigma terms. And so there is uh, an implementation uh, called SIGMED, with, even if this, it is a, t a sort of exercise or a toy language. And I will end with this um, slide and go to, in fact, something which is uh, much more bigger and which has also some uh, oriented uh, object, um, object oriented features. So uh, focalize, we, you have seen this on, for example, uh, Gilles' uh, slides. So focalize is a language and also an environment for specifying, implement, and move your code. So specification rely on a first order logics. Implementation rely on a functional uh, language uh, with uh, very close to OCaml without uh, mutable uh, values. And there is also to, to prove uh, the correctness of the code with respect to the specification, a proof language, uh, a declarative proof language, and uh, to, to, to really do the, the, the proof steps, we use the ATP uh, Xenon. And in this uh, environment, you, you have um, basic components, which are sort of, I would say, class or something like that, module or class. We can have this uh, notion, so uh, which can be parameterized or more or less functors. We can have, we, we have in this environment inheritance mechanisms, providing some refinements through definition, so we have late binding, and we have also data types, we also have pattern matching recursive functions, okay, and all this uh, can be translated into COC and also into deductive, and uh, in order to, to check uh, everything, so in particular the proofs, and uh, the, the tool uh, for uh, translating all that in deductive is called focalide, focalide. and um, as a result, the standard um, library of focalize have been translated uh, in deductive, and it also serves at um, a laboratory for doing our first um, interoperability, and um, it. So it is. Um, it was done in uh, two, 2016, yes, and we could take um, 
a piece of HOL, a piece of Koch, um, and thanks to their traduction to deductive, uh, combine a proof of a simple theorem in into focalize. Okay, and uh, that's end my uh, presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Okay, so I'm ready. <laughs> Okay, so let's move to the next part, the last one, and I will uh, present again for some of you uh, the K framework. Uh, so the K framework, in fact, uh, is a semantical framework to define formal semantics of programming languages to automatically generate tools from these semantics, as for instance, uh, interpreter, compiler, and uh, an automatic theorem prover also. Uh, K framework is based on matching logic, an untyped first order logic with fixed points and an X operator. I will explain a bit more uh, in the second part of this part <laughs> uh, what is matching logic, but it's just to remind you some detail on, on yeah, remind you of uh, at least the name of the logic. And it seems to be very different from deductive, but it's not really the case because K and deductive have a common feature that is the rewriting. So you can, uh, uh, the main difference between K is uh, you can, uh, between K and deductive is you can define conditional rewriting rules, uh, but not possible in deductive. And if you would like to do interoperability, uh, it's not a good idea to use a rewriting modulo SEUI. So I can say it's possible in, in K, but not in deductive. Okay, uh, so if you would like to define the semantics with K, in fact, there, is, there are two steps uh, to define the semantics. The first one is define the syntax, uh, thanks to a BNF grammar. And the second step is define the semantics of this uh, syntax. And to do that, you have uh, two uh, ingredients. The first one is configuration. So it, in fact, is just a state of the program. So here there is a, an example with uh, two sales. So the first one is named K, as it's written here. Uh, and um, it's just uh, precise what is the current program. And the second uh, sale is named Env for our environment. And it just says that the variable X has the value uh, 25. Okay, and you can use also uh, rewriting rules uh, and this rewriting rule works on configurations. So basically, in fact, you define a transition systems. And this is uh, an extract of uh, one of uh, transition systems that you can define with K. So as you can see, all these nodes, in fact, contain one configurations. Uh, and thanks to rewriting rules, you define, in fact, paths between um, these nodes. Uh, so at the beginning, for instance, for this um, configuration, uh, first of all, you would like to um, execute these first affectations. So the first step of this uh, rewriting is, in fact, just um, update the environment, the value of x. Then uh, we unroll one times the while loop, thanks to uh, uh, if then else uh, constructor, so like this. Then so we need more steps to, in fact, evaluate uh, the conditions on here to obtain, <coughs> to obtain uh, true. Uh, OK. And then, of course, we evaluate uh, the corresponding uh, piece of code. So here we just decrease by one the value of x, as uh, expected. And uh, you can do it, uh, I mean, more, do more uh, steps to, in fact, uh, obtain the the final result, so the value of x. 
And of course, uh, this configuration too uh, is uh, uh, reach the, the same final states. So this one. Okay, so that's the key idea of K. And to be a bit more abstract, uh, you can see in fact K as a high level language. And it's possible to translate it into core. And core is a special uh, 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 machine logic theory, or you can see it also as a language, as in fact deductee. And as uh, deductee again, a core is based on machine logic, as a deductee is based on the lambda pi calculus modulo theory. Okay, and in fact, um, when I translate K to deductee, I more precisely translate, in fact, core to deductee. Okay, and first of all, the first question uh, that we can discuss, or not, <laughs> I don't know, but uh, if you would like to translate, in fact, K into deductee, maybe the first question is how to do it. And for me, it's not completely the, the correct question. Uh, the main one is what is the purpose of the translations? Because, or, and also, what do you want to do with uh, the result of the translations? And in this case, if you would like to execute a program, it's better to use a shallow encoding that maps rewriting rule of k into one of deductee. And you would, would like to check a proof. Uh, we need a, a deeper encoding than the first one. So that's, um, so in fact, the plan of my talk. I will present you two uh, encoding for, for the rest. OK, um, I will start with a, a shallow one to execute a program in deductee. So as I say uh, many times, <laughs> I think, uh, core is uh, very, very verbose, verbose because, yes, it's a logic. And for instance, and semantics, which has only 16 lines, generate a very, very big file, uh, core one. And I will explain a bit, but no, not in detail, uh, this translation. Okay, so as I said, so in K you have BNF, configuration and rewrite tables. And in core, in fact, you have sort, symbols, and axioms. Um, and basically, so the um, BNF is translated into symbols, and of course you need to type this symbol, so you need sort. Uh, and the coding of sort is very simple. You, there is in fact a, a types of all those type in uh, K that name sort K, and uh, I type uh, this sort with uh, a many uh, user type in deductive, and all the user sort has uh, typed thanks to sort K, in fact. Uh, for symbols, it's not so difficult at all. Uh, it's just uh, straightforward. I mean, uh, no difficulties uh, to do that. Uh, and uh, now, uh, configuration, in fact, generate also certain symbols. So no, no problem uh, for this. The interesting part, in, in fact, is rewriting rules. So rewriting rule, in fact, is uh, compiled into axioms. Uh, and more precisely, uh, when a, rewrite, a rewriting rule uh, has no conditions, I just reverse the process to obtain again the, the initial uh, rewriting rules. So the, the rewriting rule written in K is very close to the one in deductee in these cases. But the problem, of course, is um, when a rewriting rule has some conditions. And here there is, in fact, two cases. Uh, if the rewriting rules work on the uh, evaluation strategy, I will show you how I eliminate um, the conditions to encode this uh, particular rewriting rules. And for other rules, uh, I, in fact, I need to encode a condition into the left and right uh, on side, sorry, of the of the rule. Okay, so I first with uh, uh, begin with the evaluation strategy. The rest of what? Uh, not really, because it's a hard theoretical problems, and uh, for now I have no solution to translate that in uh, in deductive. But what can happen if you have a program that relies on this, and for the execution you have this SVI? In fact, in practice, in um, I, I mean. Um, 
Um, this feature is not really used in uh, K semantics, except in, uh, <laughs> yes, it's a feature of K, but uh, there is not really semantics that based on, except some space of, some parts, sorry, of uh, the library, the standard one. And in fact, uh, the, the goal here is um, tra tra translate this part of the library not uh, this with this tool, but do it uh, manually. I mean, you I need to to formalize in some sense the interface of this library and do a, an implementation of that. But it's work in progress, and I need to discuss with uh, the K the K team to to understand yes this uh, library more, more deeply. Yes. U is for unit or notor elements, so it's a, uh, yeah, and I, and I add impedance. But in this case, it's not so difficult to translate it. Uh, no, nobody in uh, this deductive tool saw that, but uh, yeah. So main problem is for, yes, associativity and communicativity. Okay. Uh, so let's, try uh, to explain you how I translate intact uh, evaluation strategy. So the key idea in K is um, evaluation is the ordering thanks to a list. So here there is uh, the two, uh, yeah, the two constructor of a list and you yeah, precise the order of, the, of each uh, expression thanks to these uh, two uh, constructor. And now the question is, uh, how you know that the first element of the list is in fact evaluated. And to know that, in fact, you just need to uh, type, to, to find the type of uh, this first element. So in fact, so uh, true and false as a type, for instance, bool uh, x for just x uh, as you want. And there is, uh, the type is different that from uh, true, which uh, type is uh, a bool. Okay, so I will uh, show you a bit uh, more detail here. In fact, K generates these two roles. So the first one says that if you would like to evaluate this lazy hand, first you, um, you know that the first argument, in fact, is not evaluated. Uh, you need to uh, put this uh, first element at the beginning of the, the list. Uh, and don't care about this uh, freezer, it's just for typing reason. And I mean, it's beautiful so, but uh, <laughs> it's just a, a small detail. And for the second rule is, um, now you, you know that the first element of the list is evaluated, uh, thanks to this condition, huh, of course. So you, you reverse uh, the process and now you can evaluate uh, thanks to uh, true and uh, something to true and false to something to false, yeah. Okay, and to translate this one into deductive, in fact, <laughs> so according to this uh, BNF grammar, this rule is used only if the shape of this first argument is composed of, for with a not or end. So in fact, this tool is very close to the first one. I just precise the shape here of the, the, the first argument. And for the second one, uh, that means that, in fact, the, f the type of uh, this argument is bool here. So I just precise it thanks to uh, an injection. So that's all for this, uh, for, I mean, evaluation strategy. And for um, uh, conditional rewriting rules, uh, I will show you uh, the algorithm um, with, with an example, a simple one. So it's <coughs> just uh, a maximum. On the key ID, uh, is you gen I generate, in fact, a, a fresh symbol here, a flat max, and um, I add the, the two conditions here as a, a new argument of uh, this uh, new symbol, in fact. And to model, to model the, the same way, uh, the, the rule one and the rule two, I just uh, replace the corresponding uh, conditions with true, so here. And I, if in fact, here is the same right hand side of the f uh, this first rule, and same thing for the, the second. Okay, and just to show you 
uh, uh, another way to uh, define the semantics of a maximum. I can also use uh, this attribute otherwise. So in fact here, the user don't specify the the second uh, rewrite, the second expected uh, conditions, but it's not a problem. I can do exactly the same thing, but of course here yeah, I have only one condition. Here yeah, it's this rule is very close to this one, the first the first prime, and for the last case I put in fact false everywhere. The argument is in fact a boolean, and it works uh, as the same way. But the encoding in fact I is different. Okay. Uh, so I don't know if you have some question about this first part. Maybe a remark that uh, if uh, several people <coughs> ask if we have a conditional rule in conditional rule in BBC, and usually the answer is no, but uh, you, you see here that they can be uh, expressed in BBC using this. Uh, yes, this uh, here it's a. Uh, um, I, yes, it's very close to the Patrick uh, encoding, but there is so many encodings on this one. I think it's readable. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, there are some other encoding from Google also on many people's. But uh, yeah, so you can yeah uh, find a way to to in fact not uh, ask a deductive developer to ask a new add a new uh, feature into deductive maybe you can encode this feature thanks to uh, so this encoding here yeah. yes so that's a, a good example yeah thanks yes so here uh, here yeah, this one. Um, yes so here you just have boolean expressions with not and n um, yes so here Um, I'm not sure to understand the question. So bool here is a native uh, type in K, so it's, yes, models uh, true and false. Yes, yes of course. Mm -hmm. And I this is um, something that the, the user can write. So I can use, uh, add, sorry, uh, less, less uh, than, uh, and so on, or equals. Yeah, it's just uh, two, two constructor, mm -hmm. but I can, like yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, here, if you, I can uh, add, uh, for instance, bx equals bx, and this uh, generate into deductive another rules very close uh, to this one. But here, I, there is a equals here and equals here, mm -hmm. but not here, of course, because uh, uh, this is a um, rewriting rules uh, related to hand. But uh, yeah, what? to hand. I mean, there is two end, uh, uh, or I mean three here, but this two is not related to this one, in fact. Mm -hmm. That's a, yeah. Okay. Okay, so now, um, so it's perfect. With this encoding, you can, in fact, execute some program, but if you would like to check a proof, in fact, you just do some computation, so it's not, I mean, it's check proof, but uh, it's not really, um, uh, I mean, yesterday I explained a bit how I can check uh, k proof or proof objects. So in, f in f some, but I mean, in this example, you I need a deeper encoding. So I will present uh, this one. And just to remind you, so this is the main uh, way to translate k to deductive. So I do exactly the same thing for certain symbols. But for axiom, just um, to be clear, uh, axiom can be translated easily into symbols. And in fact, axiom um, are matching logic patterns. So I need, in fact, to encode the matching uh, logic first. So I, Thiago, explained on some other people today. Uh, so that, uh, that is, yes, the main goal for now. And first of all, I need to encode of course, pattern. So um, this is the grammar for the pattern in matching logic. Um, so this is two kind of variables, so maybe infinite way uh, set. And this is a, a symbol of a signature. So as they can be very, very uh, large sets, 
In fact, I, I encode it with the types. So there is a type, of course, for pattern here, but also for elements, so this one, set, and symbols. And if I would like to define the symbols, I just say, uh, for instance, here, the next is uh, of type symbols. Uh, of course, uh, these three elements, um, in fact, are patterns, so I need to add some injection. So I'm, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's not so difficult. I mean, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's easier than uh, predicate subtyping, for instance. Uh, I mean, here. And for other constructor, it's not so difficult uh, too, because I just need uh, one symbol for each uh, constructor. So for application, bottom, implication, exist, and new. So uh, that's it. Um, uh, maybe I, I can sleep. Uh, I mean, this one is just to say yeah, you can define, in fact, as a, it say it's done in a paper, uh, some notations, but um, you can just rule use, in fact, uh, rewriting rules, I, as uh, this one, very fa famous definitions. And uh, yeah, that's, that's all. Uh, OK, and for proof systems. Uh, so this is a, <laughs> a complete proof system of patched logic, but the goal here is not to show you uh, on, I mean, to you uh, expert of machine logics. It's a bit hard to understand this logic. So um, yes, it's broke it, I guess. The goal here is um, mainly to um, give you some ID when you have uh, this particular shape on uh, a deductive rules. So I mean, I will skip this uh, propositional fragment because it's very simple. You need, uh, of course, a, a proof symbol, as Jill say on many others. And it's very natural to encode these uh, rules. The other can be done in the exercise. I just would like to focus on this particularity because here you have hypothesis. So to be, um, to be clear, in fact, to do the difference between hypothesis and uh, conclusions, we use, in fact, here the, yes, uh, the, error, the main error of uh, the, the framework deductive. OK. Um, yeah, I this here it's a proof, but uh, OK. For first order logic, um, in fact, there is here two, um, uh, I mean, one substitution on the one meta conditions, so two, two problems here. But here, in fact, the solution is used uh, high order abstract syntax. So Gilles again uh, mentioned it a bit, but I can show you one example, I think. It's uh, not, uh, I, I think it's interesting. Uh, okay, so the ID here, uh, you can, in fact, uh, give to phi the type element pattern according to this uh, sub uh, formula. And if you do that, you need uh, an X, so this one is a parameter of this rules to uh, encode the rest of the proof. So why I don't, uh, in fact, um, encode this substitution is because here, uh, in fact, it's, it's alpha renaming. So this uh, feature that modelize on paper thanks to a, a substitution, in fact, is done by uh, the binder of uh, lambda pi or, or deductive. So that's the idea. And it's exactly the same for this kind of rule. You can uh, give exactly the same time for phi1 here. Uh, phi2 has a, a current, uh, an expected type here, pattern. And as uh, just be below, you can, in fact, uh, also quantify on an X to speak about phi1 X here to do the, the difference between this one and this one. OK. Yes? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> uh, and for framing reasoning, so maybe the last point. Uh, yes, so in fact, in this logic, some um, term can have some uh, very specific shape uh, that uh, def defined with uh, this um, grammar. So I will explain uh, the, the encoding of in these cases. So the ID is uh, defined uh, a type here, so let's say AC. And for each constructor, I define a, a symbols. So all for this uh, square, 
um, AC left for this one and so on. So the type is very uh, it's uh, exactly um, that it's uh, defined in the grammar. But uh, when we would like to, uh, after all, uh, formalize these rules, in fact, I need a kind of binder or on, or on when this context is uh, as a, this argument here at top, uh, but sorry, uh, I need also that the type of this thing is pattern. So in fact, I need a translation uh, from AC to pattern. And the, the idea here is, is just define a new symbol that takes a uh, context, the pattern, so the, the pattern that you would like to put between these two square brackets here, yeah, and at the end you obtain a pattern. And then you need an all, only uh, three rules to um, encode, or I mean to generate uh, the new pattern. So of course if the context is all, you just uh, return the, the argument. And for left and right, it's uh, just uh, symmetric. So you, it's, I mean, it's just a, a function um, with a, as a pattern matching. Okay, and now it's easy, easiest just to, uh, to uh, translate, for instance, these rules. I just use my uh, symbols to translate the context that uh, the user gives. Um, yeah, so the rest of the type is. Uh, what does AC stand for? Uh, ACE is for application context. Okay. It's yeah, the name that the K team give, but uh, yeah, <laughs> but I yeah, it's a short uh, abbreviation. Yeah, okay, and you can use uh, these rules uh, very uh, straightforward. Yeah, okay, and for other rules, in fact, it's exactly the same thing. You can maybe you combine with uh, I order abstract syntax, but uh, it's an exercise for you, and. Yes, I will maybe do strength for, for this part, yeah, because uh, it's, in fact, you can use also uh, I order absence syntax to define the prefix point rules and the caster Tarski one also. But sometimes, uh, like for this course, it's not really possible to, um, to use I order abstract syntax because here, in fact, the variable x is free in T. So in this case, I need a more deeper encoding than <laughs> I have for now. And I need to, in fact, encode the substitutions. So it, it's just so. Uh, and yeah, and I need, uh, because I say that uh, I have three variables, I, I need also a new uh, constructor, so it's named free. And I modelize variable with uh, naturals and obtain a, a set. And after that, I can obtain a, a pattern too. And yeah, the, the definition for substitution is, is transformable too. So it's just to show you uh, another example. Okay, and there is two other rules, but no difficulties uh, at all. Great, so I think it's time to conclude. So here's just some rules that I explained. So uh, when you use uh, rewriting rules, so be careful about exclusivity of the system. So for example, for uh, conditionals or SUI uh, uh, things. Uh, be careful also about confluence, standardization, and so on. Uh, and yeah, so there is these famous symbols <laughs> that you see uh, too much maybe uh, today, and uh, more classical uh, methods like uh, the parentheses I don't show you uh, here, but uh, also if there is uh, higher order abstract syntax. Um, to model a grammar, you can use type or symbols that depend uh, the meaning on, in fact, of a piece of uh, the grammar. And for model deduction rule, you can use uh, symbols as usual. Okay, so thanks. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know if you have some question for me or, or Catherine. <laughs> yes? Uh, which, this slide? You know the, the first that said C and uh, Java and Ah, Java. this one, so. Uh, so have you, can you like all of these? Uh, uh, not yet. The main problem here is uh, the case standard library. Ah, again. 
yes, because um, yeah, um, I uh, show you. In fact, I translate uh, directly from core, but uh, uh, from core, so from core, so machine logic. Yes. <laughs> oh, I mean, so. Uh, this tool, so I mean Camelo, translates not K into deductive, but core to deductive. And the problem is um, the K standard library is not really defined in core. I mean, there is not really specification of a large part of the library. So in fact, I can't uh, directly translate it because, yes, I mean, the, the K standard library doesn't exist in, in core. So it's a problem for now. <laughs> and yes, I need to discuss with uh, the K team to maybe have more detail about that. In fact, in practice, um, uh, K um, uh, has uh, several backends. So a scale one for symbolic execution, uh, LLVM for concrete executions, and it's uh, uh, it's mandatory that each backend implements a specific interface that is, uh, in fact, the K standard library. But in this interface, there is a natural numbers, integer, or vector, and tableau, and enfin, array, and so on. So, yes, I need to implement it in deducti or not because it's a, a very huge uh, work. But uh, I mean, if it's not possible to translate a K into core for the K uh, standard library, I have some problem, yes, for, <laughs> <laughs> for yeah, translate C, Java, semantics, and, and so on. And for now, it's the main problem, I think. There is also some other feature, but it's, I mean, think, uh, yeah, detailed. Yes, I hope that's the that's the plan for this part of uh, yes the work. So uh, yeah, for now, uh, for instance, it's possible for a very small imperative language, and you can write I don't know uh, fractorials or uh, sum on well, thanks to while uh, loop and so on, and you can execute it yes into deductive. Because you can. Yes, uh, translate the semantics into core, so then in deductive, and you can do exactly the same thing from a, uh, a program written in the syntax of uh, this imperative language. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I, I don't have time to show you, uh, yeah. <laughs> in fact, but, uh, yeah. And then can you, in K, somehow also write, like, scripts about your program in, in languages? Or Um, yeah. In fact, here you can see there is a deductive verifier, so it's the K prover, yeah. and you can define. So, as I say, with K, in fact, you define uh, transitional systems. So it's very natural to define a reachability property, yeah. and it's possible to do that with the K prover. And yeah. Um, yeah, there is also <laughs> work in progress about that, and uh, for now I try to. Translate K prover proof objects for only execution, concrete, concrete executions, mm -hmm. and check it. But uh, because um, equation about symbolic execution are awful <laughs> for now, so yeah, for now the focus is only on uh, concrete executions. So thanks. Yeah. Yes, it's not completely uh, I mean, different. Be able to do it just, I mean, I think it's just used by your symbol. So you mean this rule, I think? Uh, yes. Yeah. In fact, this rule is a, a bit annoying because uh, yeah, I don't have any proof that use it for now. So it's a problem to test uh, on coding on, yeah, try to understand a bit. Then Yeah. 
probably yes. I need to check yes, but uh, yeah. In fact, I, I, I present this encoding for maybe pedagogical reason to, to show you an, another way to, to define yes, substitutions. But I mean there is a, a lot of solution to, to encode this one. But I don't know for now the, the best one. And I think it's time to conclude. <laughs> but thanks for your questions. <laughs>